All right, guys, welcome to La Verde Life. It's all about green lifestyles and passions and all this stuff. We're gonna meet my friend, Andrea Jimenez, who runs Herb Club LA. She's always out here, you know, looking at stuff. Here she is, what's up, Andrea? How's it going? How are you doing? Good to see you. Andrea Jimenez, <laughs> founder of Herb Club LA. So what are we looking at? You're always out here finding yes. a... We're looking at a beautiful close live oak and we're seeing its spring growth. So you can see how these things that look like flowers are actually not there. Are the little tiny leaves growing on there. That flower is actually these guys here, these little catkins they call them. And so now this is the springtime, the spring phase of the coast live oak. So this is kind of like what you do with Herb Club LA. You mm -hmm. take people out and you show them stuff. Yeah. All right, let's walk a little bit. So where are we right now? This is called? The Hahamonga Watershed Park. And we are in, uh, I guess now what's known as Pasadena, California. Yeah. And there's definitely a watershed going on. It's been raining a lot this yes, year. Yes, yeah, especially over there, yes. What is it about nature that makes you feel so like natural, for lack of a better <laughs> word? Um, well, I think it's something that's like a very, like an inner, inner knowing that you are at peace, that you are calm even in a space that may be unknown to you. The colors, I think, is like one of the, one of the reasons why I'm so called to this. My name is Andrea Jimenez, and I am the founder uh, of Herb Club LA. And Herb Club LA has been on a journey of connecting with the plants, or it's been sort of a growing community. Mm -hmm. And it started out as me spending time alone in nature and realizing how that affected my health like how that really impacted me and then it turned into this is something that other people might benefit from so at first it started out with just inviting my friends and hanging out in nature because again i was so excited about it and then it was inviting others to join who may also be interested and then eventually I started meeting more like-minded people. I think through putting out the message, so people would be like, oh, hey, what is this? What are you doing? And then eventually um, I started coming out to these walks with people that were more interested. But always the message has been people connecting to nature as a possibly introspective um, way to facilitate health for the environment and for the self. So it's kind of a two, like, as above so below type thing. I think with me really what set me on a path to figure out my health was really painful PMS, which I know a lot of women experience. And a lot of people are sent down to the path of women, I should say, go sent down to the path of birth control. Like that's the only fix. It's funny to me to think that science or doctors tell you there's only one way where there turns out there's many ways to do this. So Moving forward, 2017, I was really into figuring out how to fix that, how to help my body, and ended up living close to the mountains. That amount of stress that was reduced just by being in nature, which we now know is uh, related to negative ions, um, you know, really, really showed in myself. Like it presented itself in my life very clearly. So it was just a lot of. Um, shifting perspectives just on what it is to live with the land and what it means how we're connected like you know we know this we know we're connected but like how truly we are connected and what that really means so it really started to pique my curiosity and like okay so there's um there's this happening here there's something here for me i don't know i just i like it couldn't leave my mind you know so i decided to do the cert certification and um it just brought a lot of joy in me. Also the way the professor would teach and talk about these animals and the plants, the way he would grab insects, the way he would grab animals, the way we would see things, I think, through his guidance. It made it like, I don't know, you know, when somebody says, or when there's like, when an artist talks about their craft, it lights them up. Um, I had been studying art for a while and photography, and I never really felt that spark, that joy until I was taking that class that I felt this spark, I felt this joy, and I really could see what he was saying, you know, when he would talk about the plants and the animals. And he just really opened my eyes to the possibility of all these things that are in this world and other worlds and how they could coexist and how they can cross paths. So that in turn opened me up to start listening to the plants in a way that I hadn't before. And 
and I felt there was truth in that because again in one of my earlier shroom trips that I ever did I felt the presence of the plants so outwardly but I didn't know what that was at the time and I wasn't even studying plants then I could just feel that when I was on shrooms they were really there their presence was there and the most beautiful message that I got was you can ask plants for help and they will help you, but you have to be open and vulnerable in asking them for help. And so right before I started asking, putting it out there that people would come out to my herb walks with Herb Club LA, I would go around and ask the land, the different plants, if that was something they wanted and if it was that they would help me create this community. And I think I think it speaks for itself that they really have helped me and that this really has come together. Um, a lot of it is thanks to the plants and their help. And I know that may sound cheesy and some people may not be open to listen to that or hear that, but I think that really was it. I was just in this really huge excitement and it just started growing and I just felt like I really believed in the mission behind it. So I would tell people and then I think people started listening. So that's, I think that's really how it started. All right, Andrea, thanks for telling me your story and yeah, explaining to people, you know, some of the motivation and inspiration behind this cool thing, Herb Club LA. Mm -hmm. You're getting a lot of uh, coverage from local media. She was in the LA Times and now she's on LA TV. Do you have any Herb Club LA walks or events coming up that I can join? Yes, this weekend we have one in Topanga. I would love for you to join. Okay, so we'll go to that and then you can see me joining them on an herb walk. Check it out. All right, guys, we're here at Topanga State Park, and this is one of my favorite parks in the entire world. It's, um, it's an amazing place up in the Topanga Canyon in the LA, Southern California area. And we're meeting up today with Andrea Jimenez, who is the founder of Herb Club LA. And what they do and what she does is she takes people on herb walks, among other things, to show people the kind of things that you can forage and the different kind of herbs that you can get in Southern California, in the mountains, in the parks. And so we're gonna join her and her group today. We're gonna take a little walk through my favorite park in Topanga State Park. We're gonna be out in the wilderness. I got my hiking shoes on. It's all about the environment. It's very green. I'm gonna go look for her, right? Let's go. All right, I'm here with the woman herself, Andrea Jimenez, the founder of Herb Club LA. So explain what the Herb Walk is. We're in the middle of it right now. So we're in the middle of the Herb Walk and we're here to learn about native plants that are growing in the area that are local to LA and some non-natives because they are, again, they've brought a lot of either joy or medicine or nourishment to the area like nettle, which we didn't see, but we did see miner's lettuce, which everybody lit up when they saw because we, we like it. It's a cute plant, it's edible and the wood Sorrel that we saw at the beginning, this bright, beautiful flower, and some people might consider it pesky, other people light up when they see it. I don't know if anybody's familiar with this guy here. Yes, so this is sorrel, and it is really fun because when I work with kids and I tell them what this is, they go crazy. Um, it is not a native, but the reason why I'm touching on it is because it's really fun. Um, you can eat it and it tastes really, really yummy. This is good. I feel like I've heard of sorrel before. Right? Yeah, I have no idea what yeah. this stuff. A lot of good sourgrass. Yeah. But also like validated that we were just- And we do sorrel. have to be mindful, yeah. I believe, of what we pick and what we take because a lot of the times, one, you don't know where you're picking from and it could be that there's a lot of cars, a lot of pollution, there might be stuff in the soil that you don't want to ingest. That's a good way to think about it. But two, you may be taking uh, from insects and other animals that do depend for it on like their life depends on it. So that's another thing to consider. And then three, I mean, if you're making a few things like foraging for your friends and family, just for yourself to try out, like that's one thing. But I think the reason why a lot of people in LA tend to be like, don't forage is because a lot of us are very industrious. So, you know, just be mindful of what you take. And, you know, as long as you're leaving enough for others, including other beings, then, you know, that that just uh then just establishes the rules of foraging all right we're in the middle of the herb walk right now andrea is showing people different herbs different plants they're picking it and also tasting them mm. 
So we're basically foraging. People are learning how to forage when they take part in the herb walk. So let's rejoin the herb walk. She's teaching us all about plants. I feel like where the leaves grow, like my board. This is a manzanita, and one of the most beautiful things about it, in my opinion, is the uh, the wood. So as you can see, if everybody gets up close, um, you will see this beautiful leaves. I'm sorry, this beautiful trunk that is like this crimson red, and then you, it is um, fruiting right now, which is so cool. And if yeah, if you get up close to it, guys, you can start to see it. This one could definitely actually this one is poisonous so if you eat a, a good amount of it even like just a leaf like this it could really get you in the hospital throwing up possibly death too so that's yeah. hemlock yeah poison. is it native to california no because that's what they use to poison socrates so oh. our socrates poisoned himself he drank he drank hemlock um yeah so it may have been a different variety or species but it is in that same family and yeah, it is poisonous. Um, so you do definitely want to get, not to the touch, but to eat it. Um, so if you want to get up close to it and look at it, it almost looks like carrot tops. Like a, yeah. Yeah. But it is poisonous, yeah. This is a California sage grove, and, or also known as Cowboy's Cologne. So and cool. it's just such a beautiful scent. It's got this very blue, green um, needles, they call them. So they're leaves, but they're these almost more look like needles, like rosemary, somebody said. How do these herb walks bring people closer to nature in a way that'll make them be a little greener, a little bit more environmentally conscious? Yeah. Well, I think, I, again, I, it'd be that same idea that we don't care for the things that we don't know, and then difference breeds or difference breeds indifference if you don't know it if you just don't see it as part of your ecosystem in your life then you won't really care for it and i feel like these plants are everywhere if you go on a hike and you recognize it it's bound to bring you a sense of connection and i think joy if you you know if you see things that way but i think most of us that get together feel that way about it